Welcome in, everyone. It's a special solo live show <laughs> um, covering the NFL trade deadline, a week eight recap, all of that stuff. Um, I'm here, obviously, by myself. Uh, no co-hosts. Uh, none of them, I actually don't think, could have done the original time uh, and, and can't do this time either. So I'm here by myself early. And uh, yeah, hopefully people see this. <laughs> Um, I, I do know that it's not the normal time, so we'll have to see if, uh, people, uh, you know, are here. I will answer any of those questions. Um, and you know, we'll hold, we'll go as long as I, uh, kind of have gas in the tank. Solo show is tough for me, but I'm, I'll do my best, especially live. Uh, if you're here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the big way to support the channel. Uh, additionally... Hit the notifications bell so you can be notified about future content. I have 2,097 subscribers of three more for 2,100. If you're here, it would really be nice um, if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, it means a lot to me. So, yeah, just, um, you know, please do that. <laughs> um, I, I see comments rolling into the chat. I'm going to promote the link on Twitter one more time. And we're going to um, get people in here. Um, but with that being said, I know that the NFL trade deadline, if you're watching this live, is in um, 25 minutes. The window closes. Uh, and we do have a couple of trades that occurred today, which have some fantasy relevance. One more relevant, I think, than the other. There were some other non, the, the commanders traded away all their defensive ends. Some other non-relevant uh, stuff. But let's, fantasy relevant at least. Uh and as always, you can sign up for Patreon at patreon.com slash fantasy advice. It's the best way to get uh, in touch with me, especially during the season. During the season, I don't, you know, I'll do uh, start sick questions on Twitter um, or X, as some people call it. Uh, but if you ask me trade questions, any sort of trade, waiver questions, pick and choose here and there, I turn off notifications on most stuff. So uh, if you're asking me buried in a thread, I'm not seeing it. So... Yeah, the Patreon is the way to get a guaranteed answer. Otherwise, uh, I understand that not everybody wants to pay for the Patreon. I get that. It sucks for me, but I get that. If you, look, I don't need more Twitter followers. I don't. I have, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. With the way the Twitter algorithm changed, there's no difference between 41,000 and 43,000. It, it doesn't matter. But if you leave a comment and come to the YouTube here, and ask the questions in the comments section of the YouTube. It really helps. It makes a huge difference. So I make an extra effort to answer questions for people who take the extra step to come to YouTube and leave a comment versus just doing it on Twitter. So that, that is one way to get some questions answered for free. And if you're here, you're already on the YouTube. So, because I do like answering the questions. In Twitter, I just can't follow it all. It's too, too much confusing. On here, it's very easy to follow. So this is in reference to... The second trade that happened today, which I guess we can talk about, the less relevant trade. The Browns traded Donovan Peoples-Jones to the Lions. The Browns received a 2025-6. The Lions received Donovan Peoples-Jones. Now, for Donovan Peoples-Jones, I don't think we really care. I, he was irrelevant in a field-stretching role in Cleveland, and he's going to be irrelevant in a field-stretching role in Detroit. So I don't care about him. But I think it has an impact on two players, one of which Luke is asking about Cedric Tillman. Cedric Tillman basically hasn't played at all. He's done nothing. Now, with Donovan Peoples-Jones gone, Tillman has an opportunity to step into the second wide, uh, outside wide receiver role behind Amari Cooper and complimenting Elijah Moore working in uh, Z and slot. So kind of mixing in there. Should we be excited about Tillman? I will say Elijah Moore hasn't gotten it done. He's had plenty of targets, but he's done nothing with it. Nothing at all. Totally unstartable. Not impressed with Elijah Moore. I mean, I heard some people dropping Tillman. I never was there. I hadn't gotten to a point yet where I'm going to drop a day two wide receiver. We were way too early for that in Dynasty. Um, should we be excited? I was never that in on Tillman. He wasn't my favorite player or anything. He fell in the draft a little more. I was hoping he would go in the second. He didn't. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see what he can do. But with P.J. Walker, it's not going to be anything. With P.J. Walker, I'm not so excited for him for any sort of fantasy. But this isn't his opportunity to 
keep the bottom from falling out of his dynasty value. If he still does nothing the rest of the year, it's going to be a bad sign. Um, so yes and no, I guess is my answer. I will say, since we're already talking about the Donovan Peoples-Jones trade, while I did move Cedric Tillman up, it's actually more concerning for me for Jamison Williams. If the Lions, who played Jamison Williams 40% of snaps in their game yesterday, Josh Reynolds, I think, was 87%. They don't even think Jamison Williams is good enough in that 40% role, that field checker role. He's not even good enough for that. They don't trust him in that role to bring in Donovan Peoples-Jones, who's not a nobody, who's someone who's had way more success in the NFL than Jamison Williams. So it's a very bad time. I think Jamison Williams is a bust. How often do players, are they this bad? And then who have high draft capital and then turn it around later. Devontae Parker, I think, is like the only one. And even he wasn't this bad. The kind of players who are this bad are your Kevin White, you know, your John Ross. These are the kind of players that have this kind of start to the career. Those, those are the names. I'm done with Jameson Williams. He's off my take any second move on. If you're only being offered a third, I guess you can hold because what does a third do? But mm, uh, for Jameson Williams, any second, and, and I'm good to move on. Solo Tyler is A plus Tyler. Look, there is a consideration. If I could hold up for 75 minutes solo, I would do the show solo. I would. If I could, if, if that were realistic. If I could do 75 minutes by myself, I would do the show by myself. But I can't. I just can't. I, I don't. I can't talk for 75 minutes. I can't hold up for that long. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. But yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I do think that the, you know, the videos are all solo. I think I come across great in a 10 to 15 minute solo video. I got to find a way to edit that stuff better. My editing, I'm going to work on that during the offseason. You're going to see some editing, I, I promise. But I'm really enjoying doing the solo video content. Five takeaways has really been good. I'm enjoying the start sit stuff. I think the, the quality is really good of the content. The editing needs to be better. And I think we could work on the thumbnails and some of the SEO and that kind of stuff to help it actually get more views. But I'm confident in the quality and what I'm delivering. But maybe some editing and then some of the stuff around the edges. But I'm happy with what is delivered. And the feedback I'm getting on those solo videos is universally positive. Unlike the feedback on the group show, which is mixed. Honestly, it's a mix of feedback. I get some good feedback, some bad feedback. But the solo videos, everyone seems to love those. And the complaints are always related to it needs some more graphics. It needs you know, a better thumbnail. It needs these types of things, not the content itself, the editing and the graphical work. And I totally agree with that feedback. I need to work on that. So during the off season, trust me, I'm going, I'm going to do a better job. Good afternoon. Yeah. Not used to being live during the afternoon, but you know, uh, we used to do the show Monday at two, uh, I had two shows in the past Monday at two and Tuesday at seven 30 YouTube's moving away from live. So you know, we'll never, we'll never get to a point of having, we're never going back to having two live shows per week. Um, you know, there might be, I think there'll be points where we'll see about live stuff during the off season. I think I'm going to take some shows off. You know, I, I don't think we're going to have a live show every week. I think it'll be the kind of thing where we'll have the show, but if there's a week where there will be no co-hosts, We'll do a very short solo show or skip the show entirely. There'll be shows where we take off. I might take some weeks off. You know, the, em the emphasis, and we'll do videos instead. Um, but yeah, here, we're here in an afternoon. So I appreciate uh, all the people being here, 18 people already. Wow. Maybe I should stream at this time more often. Uh, would you trade Ridley? Uh, there's less competition at this time, I will say. Would you trade Ridley and Goddard for Pitts on a rebuilding team? Hmm. Rebuilding Dynasty Team, 10 Team Superflex. And in the chat, please let me know, because I'm trying to, obviously I'm alone, if there are any further trades or anything I need to look at news-wise, you want me to talk about it. We, we will talk about Joshua Dobbs. Don't worry, I, I'm well aware of that. We're going to talk about that. So do not fear. But if there's any new trades other than the Joshua Dobbs or Donovan Peoples-Jones, let me know about that. 
We paired Ridley and Goddard for Pitts on a rebuilding team. Hmm. I think I would. I think I would. It's the kind of thing where it's, is it the best return? No. If it was this or nothing, I think I'd rather do this over riding those players into the ground. Like, I like Ridley, but he's going to be 29 in two months. I like Goddard. He's a month younger than Ridley. He'll be 29 in January. Kyle Pitts is, I believe, just turned 23. So I would do it. Is the value the best? No, but I would do it. Thoughts on Will Levis. Uh, I talked about Will Levis in the five takeaways video, which I suggest everyone watch. Um, but I'll uh, I have a little bit of notes on Will Levis. Crushed it in his debut. 19 of 29, 238, four touchdowns. Hit DeAndre Hopkins for three touchdowns. He looked good. Was it perfect? No. He looked good. I think that he looked good enough that he deserves to be the starter for the rest of the season. Ryan Tannehill has been horrible. I think we can all admit that, right? I think we can all see that Ryan Tannehill has not been it, right? We can agree on that. So, Will Levis will play, uh, for me, I should think he should play the rest of the year. In Dynasty, I moved Will Levis to, let's see where I have him. Uh, I'm going to got to check my Dynasty ranks. I have him at quarterback 26. So, you know, I moved him up, I think, about eight quarterback spots and about, like, 45 overall spots. So, I moved him up a lot. but. I still need to see more than one game before I move Will Levis above players like, you know, even Kenny Pickett, who has first round draft capital, you know, over Derek Carr or Geno Smith or Daniel Jones, people who've had fantasy relevance for long periods of time. Russell Wilson with his big contract. I need to see something from Will Levis more than one game to move him above those guys. But it's not going to take much more. Like if he comes out on Thursday and these four touchdowns again, we'll move him up another 20 spots. He just has to do it. Ah, oh, there are our sirens. I love those. Those are my favorite things. Um, always disrupting my show. Uh, it's part of the, uh, <laughs> what happens when you record in New York City? But yes, I uh, was impressed with Will Levis' debut. Would you trade Olave and Pacheco for Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones, uh, a 10-team PPR? Well, I assume this is redraft because if it's Dynasty, the answer is no. Obviously, I'll just keep Olave. But in redraft, Adams, uh, in 14 minutes, he's going to be stuck on the Raiders for the rest of the season. So I'd rather have Adams over Olave, but I'd rather have Pacheco over Jones by a lot. I think I'd lean Olave and Pacheco, but... It's close. Aaron Jones, I don't trust at all. Aaron Jones, I think, is finished. 29, already dealing with injuries. I, I think I'm good on Aaron Jones. So I guess I'd lean Olave and Pacheco. It's all players I don't want. Um, all right. So let's jump into the second uh, opening main segment we have, the NFL trade deadline. Joshua Dobbs was traded to the Vikings. 24th, 6th, and 7th swap. So... The Vikings announced that Jaron Hall will start this week, and I, I think that's reasonable. I don't think that um, Joshua Dobbs would be ready to start this quickly. I mean, we're talking about just a few days um, to have him start over Jaron Hall. So I understand the move. Then the next week is against the Saints, and I would expect Joshua Dobbs to start that game. So I think Jaron Hall starts one week. And, oh boy, do I not want to play any Vikings this week. You got to play TJ Hawkinson, but everyone else, I, yeah, I'll pass. I'm playing Vikings this week. I, I really would rather not uh, with Jaron Hall at quarterback. So, Joshua Dobbs, I think he keeps the value of the Vikings receivers afloat. But, He's better than Jaron Hall, but we saw that with the Cardinals, Joshua Dobbs was like, okay. He was not helping Marquise Brown be great. So, and I think Marquise Brown today is probably still better than Jordan Addison today. Jordan Addison is going to be better in my opinion because Jordan Addison is a rookie, but I think today Marquise Brown is still better. So, and when Justin Jefferson comes back, there's going to be more target competition. There's TJ Hawkinson. So with, 
I assume Justin Jefferson is going to come back when he's healthy. When Justin Jefferson comes back, Justin Jefferson is still going to be playable. He's going to be probably more of a mid wide receiver one, but he's still a wide receiver one. Uh, the other ones, TJ Hawkinson is like mid tight end one and Jordan Addison. Ugh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It really hurts, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, as for the Cardinals, I still assume that Kyler Murray is going to come back. I think it's going to be week 10, which means that Clayton Toon is going to start this week. I don't want to play Clayton Toon or any Cardinals with Clayton Toon. Uh, if he couldn't beat out Joshua Dobbs and we weren't excited to start Cardinals weapons with Joshua Dobbs, Clayton Toon is going to be a downgrade. So I actually am more concerned even about Cardinals weapons than I am with the Vikings weapons. So Clayton Toon. Can't start him. And then Hollywood Brown, I he'll, he'll be the one you have to decide about. Terry McBride, you probably have to start based on the tight end landscape. So if there's any more questions about that, we'll get into it. And, and questions are what we want to focus on, especially since I'm here by myself. Uh, let's see. What do we sell Levis for? Should be asking for a first since he's going for a late first, or at least two in the rookie draft show could get done. If it's not a first involved in Superflex, I'm not interested. Um, yeah. If there's not a first, I'm, I'm not going to be trading Will Levis. Hey, Tyler. Love to see you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, I'm having a pretty good day. I would The day would be better if people liked, commented, and subscribed uh, to the YouTube channel. Get me to that uh, 2,100 subscribers. It's, it is so hard. I don't know why, but it's so hard to get subscribers on YouTube. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but it feels like I am. So, yeah. Please subscribe if you're here. Uh, Tim Shady, kind of like that name. Um, as a contender, how do you feel about Justin Jefferson? We kind of just talked about that. If Justin, Jeff- Justin Jefferson is quarterback proof. So if Justin Jefferson is playing, he's a wide receiver one. Period. So that, that's how I feel. But typically, when there's not a good quarterback and someone like Justin Jefferson, who's like an uber alpha, everyone else suffers big time. So every other Vikings weapon is going to suffer. But Justin Jefferson himself will be. Darnell Mooney, if he goes to the Chargers, when is Darnell Mooney going to the Chargers? I, I haven't heard anything about that. Do you know something I don't? I, I don't see that happening ever. I, I don't. Yeah, no. I mean, the Chargers, I think, for now, Mike Williams is somewhere. Keenan Allen, I don't know what they're going to do with them next year. Josh Palmer is still under contract for one more year after this one. Quentin Johnston. So those two will be around. And then I think they add someone else. Max, you would pay for Brock Purdy in a one quarterback league. Need a starter bad. Um, uh, man, I'd rather, I don't really want to even pay a second for Brock Purdy. Quarterback's so replaceable in one QB. So. Third, that's not going to get it done. So he's just probably a hold one way or another. Come on, solo content. Yeah, people tend to like solo content. Um, like I said, the reviews on solo content are usually good. Biggest bust and biggest steal relative to 2023 ADP region. <laughs> so I assume we'll exclude people who got injured or were like really affected by injury. Um, like J.K. Dobbins, obviously, I don't think that counts. Um, but in terms of a bust of someone who's really played and has done nothing is Deshaun Watson. And I guess he was injured too, but he was bad even before he was hurt. So he's someone who's on my list for sure. In terms of just players who have really just done nothing. Um, I mean, can makers, obviously. <laughs> makers was benched, sent away, and then has still done nothing. So he's a total bust. Um, Derek Henry has not at all been an RB1. Tony Pollard, disaster for people who said he would be the RB1 overall. A lot of people said that. I think it was the dumbest take I've ever seen in terms of like, there's just no way. You got to hold up to the, to be the RB1 overall. Rate stats aren't good enough. You have to hold up to the work for a whole year. So he's definitely a bust. In terms of wide receivers, I mean, Garrett Wilson, but it's not really his fault. Um, I do think Garrett Wilson, if Aaron Rodgers had played, was going to be amazing. Uh, other wide receivers. Um, 
in terms of busts, I mean, Jerry Judy, Christian Watson have done almost nothing. There's been some injuries involved there. Jackson Smith and Jigba has been disappointing. Uh, Rashad Bateman, obviously. <laughs> in terms of steals, um, I mean, Christian Kirk, up until this week, was a total steal. Uh, Pukunikua, <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt that Pukunikua was a big steal. Adam Thielen, uh, of course. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, I feel like, is going to be one of them. Sam Laporta. They are going to be players who, if you had them, Alvin Kamara, Travis Etienne, they've, they've really paid off in a big way. That's a few. Get more questions in the chat. I see 17 people watching, but not too many questions. So we do these live shows to answer the people's questions. If I just wanted to do content, I just do the content. There's no point in having it be live. The live point is to answer your questions. So I uh, have some questions. Uh, and of course, when I have solo show, which is always seems to be the problem, my voice is like dying. So I'll do my best to, to keep that going. Uh, 12 Team Superflex PPR, currently retooling for next year. Shout and Bijan for Justin Jefferson, Laporta, and a mid 24 first. So uh, that seems interesting. I mean, if you're retooling, I don't want to get rid of Stroud, but I also don't really want to keep Bijan. Uh, I think I would take Justin Jefferson. I'd rather have Justin Jefferson over Stroud, more proven wide receiver, long-term asset. Uh, and then I'd rather have Laporta in a mid first, I think, over Bijan. I love Bijan, but Laporta is my dynasty tight end one. And I don't know if there's a first in separation between him and uh, Bijan and Bijan and Laporta anymore. So I'm going to go with Jefferson's side. Uh, it has all rebuilding assets. So I would lean that way. Good trade, though. I am two and six. Uh, the best team in the league is looking to acquire one of my running backs for a wide receiver. Who would you trade away in this group? ETN, DeAndre Swift, Josh Jacobs, A-Chain. Um, in terms of dynasty, all of these players, except for A-Chain, are players that need to go if you're two and six. ETN, for sure. Then looking at these players, Olave, Nakua, Godwin, Pittman, and Addison. Olave has been disappointing. If you could trade something like ETN for Olave straight up in Dynasty, I'd love to do that. Um, could you trade DeAndre Swift for Pittman, who's also been kind of disappointing? Um, Nakua with Matthew Stafford hurt would be a target. So you have a lot of options there. Thoughts on Bijan? So... In terms of Bichon, I still have him at Dynasty RB1, but to me, it feels like Brees Hall is catching up to Bichon. Like Brees Hall, for me, Brees Hall is closer to Bichon at one than he is to Jameer Gibbs at three. So Bichon just hasn't done enough to separate himself from like Brees Hall. And I've moved him below Amon Ra and CeeDee Lamb, who are 24-year-old wide receivers with, you know, immense upside, who ha have a track record of success. So we'll see. Uh, but I've moved Robinson below that also tier of quarterbacks, like Lawrence, Tua, Stroud are all ahead of him. Obviously, Lamar as well. So, yeah, I've moved him down a little. It's a buying window if people are panicking. Like, if you can get Bijan still for two firsts, I would still do it. In redraft, I mean, in redraft, if you're two and six, I mean, do your best. But, like, I don't know. You have to trade away A-Chain because if you're two and six, you need the wins now. So trade A-Chain for what you can get. But there's not, there's at some point in redraft, there's nothing you can do. Like, you know, you do get eliminated in redraft. It, it does happen. But yeah, trade away A-Chain because essentially you have to win every game at this point. Uh, that's why I'm not a big fan of redraft. You know, like my Scott Fishbowl team has kind of felt over for a few weeks. Like I drafted uh, Burrow, who I played every week early on and just got me a bunch of bad points. Drafted JT, who didn't play for five weeks. Um, and then T. Higgins was constantly hurt. Devontae Adams kind of been mad. Christian Watson was constantly hurt. Greg Dulcich did nothing. And, you know, the only good draft picks I had were Kenneth Walker, Zach, Zach Moss when I picked him up off waivers, and Sam Laporta. But it just wasn't enough. So many bad draft picks. 
uh, in concert with the few good ones. So it's 358. Uh, I have not heard about any more trades. Um, if there have been any, please uh, let me know. Um, but otherwise, we will keep uh, rolling into the advice this week and then you know, we'll take a look back at some stuff from the past week, but I, um, I don't see any trades. I mean, it is interesting that the, uh, commanders decided to decimate their defensive line. Um, I don't know if anyone has a comment on that. I know Ryan is a commander's fan, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of trades, but they're all like defense. Anyway, let's see. Was there anything else I really want to talk about? So in terms of news, Justin Ross was placed on the commissioner's exempt list. Uh, not much to say about that. You can drop him in Dynasty. No interest in Justin Ross. Chase Brown was put on IR. Not much interesting there, but I was kind of hoping he would challenge for a role behind Joe Mixon. That has not happened at all. Um, Joshua Dobbs, as we talked about, was traded. One thing that I thought was sucked from this past weekend was Kendrick Bourne towards ACL. He was actually playing really well. He had gotten to the point um, if, uh, you know, if he had, um, if we'd gotten to another week, we would have, we'll talk about that in a second. If we'd gotten to one more week, it would have been interesting uh, to see, to start Kendrick Bourne, but I guess not. Oh, let's see. My team is two and six, yet I'm the second highest scoring team in my leagues. All of my losses have been due to one player having a crazy boom game. Can't seem to buy a win at this point. It, it happens, you know, it, it happens and it, it sucks. It's frustrating and it sucks. And to some degree, there's only so much you can do. Like I, it, yeah, it sucks, but you know, it is what it is. And sometimes you get unlucky. Unfortunately, fantasy football has a, a luck component and you know, it's a part of the game. So it sucks, but that's, that's the reality. One quarterback dynasty PPR, my bye week for quarterback. And the only two on waivers are Mac Jones and Minshew. Who would you start? So this week, Gardner Minshew's playing at Carolina, Mac Jones versus Washington. I think I'd rather the Carolina matchup, even though they played well against Houston. Gardner Minshew's been better for fantasy than Mac Jones. So I'm going to go with Gardner Minshew. But Mac Jones uh, and Superflex, if you have to start him this week, is not the worst start in the world because Washington just traded away their entire pass rush. So I'm a lot less concerned about Mac Jones spending the whole game on his ass than I would have been before. Um, so 401. Uh, I don't know if we'll get any last minute trades coming in. Uh, probably, I'm going to assume probably not, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Um, but otherwise we will, uh, just talk about, you know, the usual stuff. So again, I always encourage people to ask questions because that's probably you know, like I said, the only reason we really do live content anymore. Uh, where was I in the news? Oh, okay. Leonard Fournette will sign with the Bills. Already signed, I suppose. And that's going to be interesting because Latavius Murray has been completely ineffective in his goal line role. <laughs> I put that in quotes because he actually, I don't think he ever scored on anything. Um, but allegedly, goal line role. Um, so I do enjoy that Leonard Fournette signed with Bills. Hurts James Cook a little bit, not too worried. Kirk Cousins tore his Achilles. We talked about that. We know that. Talked about that on yesterday's Five Takeaways show. Tyson Bajan's going to start week nine. I wish he weren't. Uh, Cole Komet was apparently the, his guy this week. But uh, Tyson Bajan is not it. <laughs> he folded big time against the Chargers. So. There's nothing going on with Tyson Page. Biggest Dynasty Superflex buy for a rebuilding team. Mm. Anthony Richardson. 
uh, I think he's going to be a high-end asset for years. And he's not going to score you points this year, so you can get the points off your roster. So Anthony Richardson is my answer to that question. Someone should have freed Devontae Adams. Yeah, it's just the kind of thing where, like, with the way the NFL cap works, having a trade of that type of salary during the season is, like, really, really unlikely. Like, it almost never happens. It's hard enough to trade someone like Cortland Sutton, um, you know, during the, um, during the NFL trade deadline. As you see, it didn't happen. So here's all the trades that were agreed to today. The commanders traded away. Montez swept to the Bears. Chase Young to 49ers. Uh, the Cardinals traded Josh Dobbs to the Vikings, we talked about. The Browns traded DPJ to the Lions, we talked about. Um, and then uh, Vikings traded Ezra Cleveland to the Jaguars, should help their line. And Packers traded Rasul Douglas to the Bills. I don't know how much that matters. Um, but no Devontae Adams trade, no trade of anyone in Denver. The trade deadline, as usual, was disappointing. Disappointing. Didn't really do much. <laughs> uh, not much happened, as usual. I feel like we've done this every year, and it always just kind of fizzles. In a redraft Superflex, who do you want rest of season? Kyler Dubs or Will Levis? Um, Kyler. If Kyler plays, it's Kyler. Otherwise, I mean, Levis over Dubs. It's not Dubs. <laughs> Dubs is not going to be good. So, let's see. Where was I? Uh, Matthew Stafford uh, has a UCL sprain in his throwing thumb. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but Brett Rippon can't stomach seeing that. I'm concerned about Pup and Nakua. You have to still start them, but I'd really rather not. So that's going to suck. A lot of quarterback injuries. Kenny Pickett has a rib injury. Probably going to play. I don't know if it even matters between him, him and Mitch Trubisky. Kenny Pickett's been so bad. Curtis Samuel has a toe injury. Jahan Dotson was unlocked. We'll see if those are related. <laughs> uh, Devontae Parker has a concussion. Demario Douglas is going to get a lot of opportunity uh, in New England. And I think he might even be startable as soon as this week. Daniel Jones is going to return week nine. nine. He better because the Giants had seven passing yards without him. Uh, I think that Daniel Jones became a lot healthier when we found out that uh, Tyrod Taylor was going to miss time. And then Drake London has a groin injury. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal. I expect Drake London to play this week. But, you know, given what the Falcons have been saying about it. So, let's see. Where are we? Puka or a 24 first? Uh, 10 team super flex looking like a mid first? Hmm. Good question. I will lean toward uh, Puka, but it's closer now than it was with Stafford's injury. Let's see here. Anything else to discuss? So just looking at some big picture takeaways, Darren Waller had a hamstring injury. Uh, I expect him to miss some time. Um, the Giants offense, I can't even. Discuss it. Uh, let's see. Jordan Love sucks. It's one of the things I had on my on my notes here. He is uh, really bad. Really, really bad. I just, I can't. And he's killing the entire Packers offense. Mostly Christian Watson is the one he's hurting the most. But Jaden Reed and Romeo Dubs are also kind of suffering. I mean, Dubs had 18 yards on nine targets. So, not good. Not good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What what else do you guys want me to talk about? I uh, <laughs> this is usually at the this is usually the point in a solo show where I start to run out of gas. I see the uh, the audience starting to <laughs> disappear. So um, we can probably wrap it up in the next 10, 15 minutes at most. <laughs> if um, you know. If there are no more major questions, just go through a little bit more from my notes here. So 
the um the Saints and the Colts, uh, one of my biggest takeaways was Rashid Shahid <laughs> went off like crazy. Three for 153 and one on three targets. I mean, he might be fool's gold on waivers, but definitely someone to consider. And then um, Jonathan Taylor had 12 carries for 95 yards and then didn't see any work in the second half because they wanted to play Zach Moss instead. So frustrating. Uh, Just reminds you that running backs are frustrating. And uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. There There was a lot that happened. This was a very high scoring fantasy week. I talked a lot about it on five takeaways. I talked about Trey McBride's breakout, Jahan Dotson coming back. Uh, Javante Williams being back to being a workhorse back. Uh, so if you like that, make sure to watch yesterday's video. Um, it was pre-recorded, so I was a little more put together. Um, and then I just want to make some comments on last night's game. <laughs> the Raiders versus the Lions. Let's just say it was a mess. Jimmy Garoppolo was abysmal. <laughs> 10 for 21, 126 and a pick. Josh Jacobs was good. But Devontae Adams had one catch for 11 yards on seven targets and looked like he wanted to kill Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Josh McDaniels should be the betting favorite for the next coach fired. Uh, So keep an eye on that. And then uh, as for the Lions, we already talked about Jamison Williams being a joke. And Jameer Gibbs, some I was told he can't handle more than 15 touches in a game. Apparently that was not true because he had... 26 carries, 152 yards and a touchdown, and five catches for 37 yards to the air. So apparently it is possible for him to be a workhorse. Wouldn't you know? Given the the dialogue and conversation, I never would have known. I never would have known without uh, looking into it that he could be a workhorse back. So now I I know. I'm glad I learned that um, Jameer Gibbs could be a workhorse if the situation Warrants. Well, I think I'm happy with this. I uh, I appreciate everyone who came into the chat. There were 18, 19 of you at one point. And uh, yeah, I'll, um, next week, we'll be back at the normal 7.30 time. Hopefully, we'll have a bunch of co-hosts. I'm hoping. Um, and then uh, on Friday, I'll release Start Sit Video if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, there might be shorts throughout the week if anything fun happens. And uh, yeah, as always, if you're here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel. Yes, Ken Mitchell's is worth a stash. Um, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to support the channel. Patreon.com slash fantasy advice for the Patreon. And uh, yeah, otherwise, I will see you all later. Peace out.